A small strike force of ultramarines have been deployed to recover and defend sacred relics of their chapter, salvaged from the lost tomb world Damnos. Brought down on a forgotten, seemingly abandoned lunar colony in the Ultima Segmentum, the seconded Aquila Transport Shuttle not only carries artifacts of fallen Adeptus Astartes, but also mysterious heirlooms of their Necron Nemesis. Will the Emperor's Space Marines be able to recover and defend their lost vessel? Or will the Mephret Dynasty exact their revenge? Hi everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. In this 8th edition Warhammer 40,000 battle report, my Necrons are going head to head with Ant's Ultramarines in a small 500 point skirmish game. For this narrative scenario, the game will be a maximum of 4 turns, with each of the 4 downed Aquila lander terrain pieces being worth 1 victory point if they are held uncontested within 3 inches at the end of turn 4. Because it will be quite a small game, no points will be awarded for First Blood, Linebreaker or Slay the Warlord, and the winner will be determined by how many Aquila parts are held at the end of turn 4 or by totally destroying the opposing force. Now let's take a look at the armies. So for my HQ choice I have the Cryptek armed with a Veil of Darkness, a Staff of Light and a Chronometron. And he's my Warlord and he has the Merciless Tyrant Warlord trait. For my troop choices, I have 10 Necron Warriors, and I also have 10 Immortals armed with Tesla Carbines. And finally, in my fast attack slot, I have 3 Canoptech Wraiths. No ranged weapons on these, just close combat weapons. And I'm running this whole army as the Mephrit Dynasty. Hi guys, I'm Ant. I'm bringing 500 points of Ultramarines to try and wipe these Necrons out and stop them from getting the crashed ship. So leading my Space Marine Force is a Primaris Captain. He might look like a Captain in Gravis Armour, but he really is a Primaris Captain because of points. Um, he is going to be my Warlord, and he will have the Armour Indomitus. So he's also got the Imperium Sword as his Relic, and that allows him to re-roll failed charges. He's armed with a Mastercrafted Bolt Rifle and a Bolt Pistol. My troop choice, I've got a five-man squad of intercessors. For my fast attack, I've got a three-man squad of inceptors. So they'll be hoping to put out a lot of firepower. And then lastly, I've got a five-man squad of hell blasters. So they're armed with the rapid fire variant of the plasma incinerator. So um, because my boy's in blue, they're going to be running the ultramarine chapter tactic, which will give me plus one to leadership and allow me to fall back and shoot in the same turn. We deployed our units using the Hammer and Anvil deployment map, which means we set up our armies at the far ends of the length of the board, leaving 24 inches of no man's land in the centre. This also puts two pieces of the lander within easy reach of each force. Before fighting, we need to decide who's going to go first, so we just chose to roll off. And luckily, I go first. So it's good the four. I'm happy to go first, actually. So Ants and Scepters move their 10 inches up to leap up onto the building, hoping to get a bit closer to those wraiths. The Intercessors move forward their 6 inch movement to stay in range of the objective they're holding, but get a little bit closer with their bolt rifles. The Captain moves forward a tiny bit to stay in cover, but also give the Hellblasters reroll hits of 1. So Ant realises, unfortunately, his Inceptors are slightly out of range with their Assault Bolters, so because this is just a little informal game, we roll to advance before the shooting phase. Normally you'd do this as you were moving. But unfortunately he rolls a 2, so they only nudge forward a tiny bit, meaning only one is in range. Ant's Inceptors take 6 shots against the Wraiths, needing 4s because he advanced, but he only scores 2 hits. Strength 5 versus Toughness 5, he needs 4s to wound, and he scores 1 wound. Wraiths have a tasty 3 plus invulnerable save, but I rolled a 1, no saving that, and one of the Wraiths is down to 2 wounds, and next the Hellblasters fire their Plasma Incinerators at the Necron Warriors. 2 hits, but the Captain letting him re-roll that 1 makes it 3 in total. Strength 7 versus Toughness 4, he only needs 3s to wound the Warrior, but he only gets 1. At AP-1, this Warrior needs to roll a 5 or more to be saved, but he rolls a 4 and one of the Warriors is toast. So 5 shots coming in at the Warriors from the Intercessors using their Bolt Rifles, needing 3s to hit, and all of them hit. Strength 4 versus Toughness 4, so it will require 4s to wound, and unfortunately only 2 wounds are scored. With AP-1, I'll need 5 ups to save, I only make one of them. So another warrior is down. 
So that's the end of my shooting phase and actually the end of my turn. Um, there's nothing really in charge range right now, um, so pretty ineffective shooting, but you know what? It's still very early days. Even though I killed two warriors, uh, they might come back. So uh, Guy's going to roll off at the beginning of his turn to see if they come back, and they'll come back on a five. Damn. So they both come back. So actually, my shooting was all for naught. And now I'm going to activate my Cryptex artifact ability, the Veil of Darkness. This lets me remove the Cryptek and a unit that's close to it and set up anywhere on the table as long as it's at least 9 inches away from an enemy and the unit is within 6 inches of the Cryptek. And obviously I'm going to get them as close as possible to those Hellblasters. Next guy's going to take his warriors and, uh, and, and move them just slightly just so we can spread them out as wide as possible, trying to take both of those objectives in the back line. So when moving squads, the models need to stay within 2 inches of each other to maintain squad coherency. So the Wraiths have an ability where they can ignore vertical terrain. Um, so they just meet, they can just move their full 12 inches as if it wasn't there. So Guy's going to be moving his Wraiths uh, very, very close um, because they are stabby and they want to stab my Space Marines. So that's the end of the movement phase. Let's go into the shooting phase! So Guy's going to shoot his whole squad of Immortals that are in range at the Hellblasters, like everything. Uh, and they've got a really cool ability where um, any sixes will actually do three hits instead of one. Because of the Mephrit dynasty, um, because Guy is in half range, he'll actually get an extra minus one to the AP. So there'll be AP minus two as opposed to AP minus one, which is pretty handy. Now I need threes to hit, but I roll loads of ones. Only eight hits, but those 2d6s will cause three hits each because of the Tesla Carbine special rule, so 12 hits in all. So the Tesla Carbine of the Immortals is a strength five weapon versus the toughness four of the Hellblasters. Guy just needs threes in order to wound. That's some pretty good conversion there, um, and eight wounds actually scored. So in order to make these saves, I need fives and I score one. Each of the Hellblasters have two wounds. So that's seven wounds going through. Um, that's three dead Hellblasters and one is on one wound. That hurt. So next guy is gonna fire the Cryptex Staff of Light at the Hellblasters. So Blissett's Killer three and he scores one hit. So the Staff of Light has strength five, again versus the toughness four of the Hellblasters. Need him freeze to wound. Guy scores a five. So if AP minus two, I'm gonna do a five to save this Hellblaster. Score a one, which is another dead Hellblaster. <laughs> Next guy is gonna split the shots from the Warriors. So guy's gonna be putting four hits into the Hellblaster and the remaining six into the Intercessors. So first guy rolls for the Hellblasters. Guy scores two hits with a ballistic skill of four. And the strength four weapons against toughness four of the Hellblaster, so fours to wound. Guy scores one wound. And with an AP minus one, I'm going to need four to save that lonely Hellblaster. So that's only one, so that's another wound gone. Then Guy rolls the six shots into the five-man squad of Intercessors, scoring two hits. With fours needed to wound, no wounds. Finally! <laughs> so with all the shooting done, it's time to move on to the assault phase. So in the assault phase, Guy is going to choose to try and charge all of those immortals into that one poor Hellblaster. But luckily, I get to overwatch. No sixes, so you're safe. So although the immortals are nine inches away from the Hellblaster, we kind of agreed for this game that actually the terrain would um, take an extra inch to move over. So Guy needs realistically uh, a roll of ten on two dice in order to actually make the charge. And with exactly a 10, Guy makes the charge. So Guy's next going to try and get the Wraiths on a charge in at the Inceptors. So before he does that though, I'm going to fire a heck of a lot of Overwatch. So needing 6s on 18 shots. So that's 4 6s out of that Overwatch. And it is a Strength 5 weapon versus Toughness 5 of the Wraiths. So needing 4s to wound. And that's two wounds going through to the Wraiths. AP minus one. The Wraiths have a free up invulnerable save. So the guy makes one and fails one. So that's just one extra damage onto that already damaged Wraith over there. 
So the guy's going to need a four inch charge in order to actually get there within an inch. Of course, these wraiths are ignoring vertical and guy gets four <laughs> just about in there. Not satisfied with just about getting in there. Guy's going to reroll the one using a command point. Guy scores a five, so he's got eight inches to play with. <laughs> so even though Guy had eight inches to play with, he still wasn't able to get all of his models in that unit around within an inch of the interceptors. So if only two in, um, hey, it's better than nothing, right? That's all of Guy's models that he's going to be charging in. So he's selecting not to charge in the Warriors because they are outside of charge range of 12 inches. And um, he's afraid that the Cryptek will get whooped if he charges them in because he's not very good. So, uh, hey, why bother? Let's keep him out there. Now we're on to the fight phase and Guy gets to pile in um, those units that have charged. So they get an additional three inch move so they can just realign and adjust so they each get one attack each. So Guy's got eight attacks coming in, hitting on threes. So out of the eight, Guy scores three hits. So with strength four of the Immortals versus toughness four of the Hellblaster, he's going to be wounding on fours. And all three hits wound. There's no AP, so I just need threes to save this Hellblaster. He stands strong and firm. All three wounds saved. The bony fingers, they cannot penetrate the Hellblaster. So Guy's next going to go to his Wraiths, who made the charge. So the army that actually landed their charges, they get to fight first. And then it's going to be those enemies that were charged will get to fight back. Spider Wraith, Spider Wraith, piles into the Inceptors. Move around, off the back, up they climb, to attack. Look out, here come the Spider Wraiths. <laughs> So the Wraiths have three attacks each, so that's nine attacks coming through, hitting on threes. So out of nine attacks, Guy hits six times. So with Strength 6 against Toughness 5 of the Inceptors, uh, Guy's get, still going to need threes to wound. So that's five wounds going through, and at AP minus two, I'm going to need fives to save these Inceptors. So that's not a bad saving roll, um, but I am going to choose to command point um, one of those failed saves in order to keep one of the Inceptors alive because the Wraiths do two damage each. So effectively I've lost two Inceptors now, so let's re-roll that dice. Unfortunately I don't make this save on the re-roll and uh, it dies, so I've lost two Inceptors from that. So all of Guy's models that actually charged have now fought, so I get to hit back. So let's start off with the Hellblaster. Three attacks, hitting on freeze. So that's landing in two hits on those Immortals. So with Strength 4 against Toughness 4 of the Immortals, I'm going to need fours to wound. Unfortunately, uh, no wounds. So next I'm going to have a go with my Inceptor on those Wraiths. So same deal as before, three attacks, hitting on freeze. That's all successful hits. So strength four of the Inceptor versus toughness five of the Wraiths, which means I'm gonna need fives to wound. Not too bad, that's two wounds at AP minus zero. So Guy needs to save these on three, and Guy doesn't save it. So that's one Wraith taken out, and one wound put onto one of the other Wraiths. So that's the end of Necron's turn one. I'm pretty impressed at how they did actually, there's some really really effective rolling, uh, very lucky compared to how I usually roll, <laughs> not nearly as many ones, and yeah I think I've set myself up pretty well to win this game hopefully, so we'll see how it turns out. So at the end of turn one, Ant will need to make sure that single Hell Blaster doesn't run away from low morale. On a roll of a six he will lose the model, and with a three he is absolutely safe, Ultramarines stand strong. So at the start of Ultramarines turn 2, Ant is going to fall back his Hellblaster to allow those Intercessors to dish out some pretty serious firepower against those Immortals. And also because they're Ultramarines they can still shoot after they fall back, albeit at a minus one penalty. He's also going to use this opportunity to bring his Captain out to just over an inch away to pretty much guarantee a successful charge if he wants to. The Inceptor is going to escape the clutches of those wraiths and come down to say hello to my very, very squishy Cryptek. And the way Ant moved his Inceptor moved him slightly closer to the Cryptek than the Immortals, which basically let him take shots against my Warlord because you can only target characters that are the closest model to you. 
So in a fit of desperation, Ant will overcharge his plasma incinerator, meaning if he rolls ones, he will die. But actually not, because the captain will let him re-roll failed ones. And unfortunately he rolls two twos, so absolutely missing, and not even killing himself. How boring. <laughs> <laughs> so the captain, firing his mastercrafted auto bolt rifle, will only need twos to hit, and he scores two hits on the immortals. Strength 4 v toughness 4, he'll need fours to wound, and he scores one wound. And with no AP, I'll need a three plus to save this, and I make it, so no damage scored at all. All of Ant's intercessors are within 15 inches of my immortals, which makes them rapid fire range, so Ant will be firing ten shots, needing threes to hit, Ant scores six hits. Strength 4 against Toughness 4, he'll need 4s to wound, and he scores 4 wounds. So many 4s. And AP-1, the Immortals will also need a 4 plus save. So many 4s. All that firepower coming in, and only one Immortal takes a wound on the failed roll of a 2. So the Inceptor is now going to target my Cryptek, the Warlord, and with 6 shots coming in, Ant needs 3s to hit. It scores 3 hits. And with quite a feeble toughness 4, Ant only needs 3s to wound. 3 wounds. And with minus 1 AP, I'll need 5s to save these shots. And I fail every single one. And that punishing barrage takes my Cryptek down to a single wound in turn 2. Moving along to the Ultramarine's charge phase. Ant's going to first try and take on the Immortals with his Captain, and then the Hellblaster, and then finally the Intercessors while his single Inceptor is going to try and take on the Cryptek. Now before that happens, the Immortals get to fire Overwatch at the Captain who's charging first. So needing 6s to hit, I score 3. Now, but because they're using Tesla Carbines, those 6s transform into 9 because each one scores 3 hits. So needing 3s to wound, I score 6 wounds on the Captain. This is starting to look a bit interesting. Now because these Immortals are at half distance, they'll have minus 2 AP, so this barrage could prove quite damaging to the Captain, so Ant is going to activate the Armor Indomitus, which will give him a 3-up invulnerable save against this attack, and for the rest of the turn. Now Ant still rolls 3 twos, meaning he fails 3 of those wounds, but they only cause 1 damage each, and the Captain has 6 wounds, so he is reduced to 3. Now because the captain was only 2 inches away, rolling for assault distance is really just a formality, but Ant does it anyway, and what do you know, he's in! <laughs> and without the possibility of overwatch, the Inceptor is free to make the tiny advance into the fray, scoring 10 inches and only needing 2, so he's definitely in as well. Now the Intercessors are 9 inches away, so they'll need at least a 8 inch roll to get into combat. And they score a 10, so they are definitely in as well. Now finally, the Inceptor is going to charge the Cryptek. The Cryptek will have three shots of Overwatch, and fails them all, unfortunately, needing sixes. The Inceptor easily makes the charge with a roll of nine. Now, when Inceptors get into combat, they have a special rule called Crushing Charge. Now, basically, they roll a dice per Inceptor, and for every six, it causes a mortal wound on the enemy. No sixes this time, though, so he'll have to kill him fair and square. Three attacks coming in, hitting on threes, and every single one makes it. Not looking good for the Cryptek. Needing fours to wound, Ant only scores one. But because the Cryptek only has one wound left, and given half the chance of the save, Ant decides it's worth it to spend a command point and try and score another wound on the Cryptek. And he does. And with a pretty lucky roll, I'm still in the game. Ant uses a 3 inch pile in to get all of his intercessors close enough to fight the immortals. So starting with the Hellblaster, needing 3s to hit, and Ant hits all 3 of the attacks. And needing 4s to wound, Ant scores 2 wounds. Needing a 3 plus armor save, my immortals are safe from this attack. So with 11 attacks coming in from the mix of the sergeant and the regular intercessors, Ant gets 11 attacks and he scores 7 of them on a 3+. Plus. And with 4s needed to cause any wounds, Ant scores another 4. And needing 3s to save the Immortals, I actually fail on 2 of them, which will take 2 of them out. And at this stage in the game, I'm kind of happy to do that, so I won't waste any command points. And now onto the Captain. With 5 attacks coming in, he'll be hitting on 2s, and unfortunately misses on 2 of those dice, so he only scores 3 attacks. 
and with equal strength and toughness, they'll need fours to wound, and actually, every single one wounds. And with no AP on his attacks, I get my full 3 plus save, and I make every single one of them. And now the Ultramarines have finished their fighting, I can finally fight back with my Necrons. First up, let's do the Cryptek. Now the Cryptek is actually an incredibly skilled close combat warrior, and has one full attack. Hitting on threes, and obviously, because he's such a tactical warrior, he chooses to miss by rolling a two. <laughs> now the Immortals only have one attack each, so I definitely want to try and finish this job off and get rid of that Hellblaster. So all of the Immortals are going to attack him. And needing threes, with an incredibly lucky roll, all of the attacks hit. And with slightly more average rolling, four of those attacks go on to cause wounds. So even though these attacks have no AP, Ant needs to roll no ones or twos, but rolls one one, meaning this Hellblaster has blasted his last hell. <laughs> but Ant decides it's maybe not his time, so he uses his last command point to re-roll that one, and uh, rolls another one. It's pretty unfortunate. So that Hellblaster is definitely dead. Goodbye. And that marks the end of the Ultramarine's second turn. So before Guy starts his turn, he's going to see how many of those immortals that I killed last turn, fair and square, actually come back on a five or more. So he's got three to roll. Let's see if they come back. And they don't. Stay down. So the Cryptek has a living metal rule, which also allows him to gain one wound per turn. So he's gone up from one up to two wounds. So Guy's going to be moving the Cryptek out of combat so that his warriors can actually start firing and shooting on that lone Inceptor. Guy's then going to move his race down uh, to join the big fight down the bottom there with the Immortals and the Intercessors. The Gauss Flare on the Warriors has a range of 24 inches, but because it's rapid fire, they get to double tap at 12 inches. So Guy is going to be moving his warriors up so they're within 12 inches of the Inceptor. Next, Guy moves down his Rafe Spools. To kill what I did there. Rafe Spool, like the actor. Uh, he's moving them 12 inches. They ignore vertical movement, so they can just float on down like the little spider leggy things they are. So that's the movement phase all done. Now it's time to move on to the shooting phase. So due to the Mifrit Dynasty, it kind of sounds like a box of chocolates, but like Turkish Delight or something, Mifrit Dynasty. They are going to be also at AP minus two, um, and we've got 20 shots coming in at this Inceptor. So that's 20 shots hitting on freeze, and that's 11 hits. That's, that's over half the hits. Making the mark. Strength 4 of the Gauss Flayer uh, against the Toughness 5 of the Inceptor means you're gonna need 5s to make a wound. So that's 6 wounds through at AP minus 2. 6 5s coming up! So we've only 2 saved, that's 4 wounds going through and they've only got 2 so yeah he's dead. So that's all the shooting that's left and we're gonna move into the charge phase. So, due to the intercessors already being locked up in combat, they're not going to be able to shoot any overwatch, so the wraiths have just got to make sure that they get in on the charge. And they do. Surprise. So that's all the charges that are going off, and the wraiths are going to get to fight first in the fight phase. So the wraiths get three attacks each, so that's a total of six coming in at the intercessors, hitting on freeze. So we're free going through, and with a strength six versus toughness four, uh, means he's going to need freeze to wound, with two wounds going through. So with AP minus two, uh, we're going to need two five ups, but these do two damage each. So any failed saves is going to be one dead intercessor. So that's two dead intercessors. So next, Guy piles in the Immortals to the Intercessors to make sure he can get maximum attacks. So the Immortals have seven attacks, hitting on threes. So that's four that hit the mark. Strength four versus toughness four, so four's needed. And that's no wounds. The Intercessors will live on to hit back. So with three attacks from the Sergeant, another two from each of the Intercessors, that's a total of seven attacks coming in at the Immortals. So that's six that actually hit. Strength four, toughness four, gonna need fours again, the magic fours, uh, and I get three fours. So that's three wounds going through on the Immortals at AP zero. 
So that's one immortal dead and two saves made. So with Guy piling in the Immortals, that means that the captain's no longer engaged in combat, so he can't actually hit back. So that's the end of that turn. Ant is choosing to bypass the movement and shooting phases and move directly into the charge phase. So with the end of turn two, uh, there's not many models left on the board for the Space Marines. Um, I've got a feeling this is gonna be a blaze of glory so in one final act of maybe suicidal desperation, Ant is going to charge his captain in to face the Immortals and the Wraiths in this combat. The captain has five attacks on the Immortals, hitting on twos, but unfortunately misses three of them with ones. Fortunately though, he does roll the two fours that are required to cause some damage on those Immortals. A single Immortal takes a wound and is removed. Ant's intercessors are going to target the Immortals and score four hits with their seven attacks. And with fours needed to wound, two go through. And needing three ups to save, I actually fail one of them. But then I remember I have one command point left, so I'm going to re-roll that. And fail no more. Time to fight back with the Necrons, and I'm going to pile in my wraiths onto these intercessors. Six attacks, needing threes, and five are successful. Strength 6 against Toughness 4, I need 3s to wound, and I score 4 wounds. So as these attacks are minus 2 AP and 2 damage each, anything below a 5 will cause fatal wounds to the Space Marines. And 2 fail, meaning that 2 of the Intercessors are taken out. My 5 remaining Immortals will pile in against the Intercessor Sergeant. 1 attack each, hitting on 3s. 4 hits taken, and Strength 4 against Toughness 4, 4s needed to wound and two wounds done. Ant rolls to save those wounds, but fails one, taking the sergeant down to his final wound. So after that slow slog of a fight phase, my immortals now have to face a morale test because they have lost five models. And even though they have a high leadership of 10, if I roll a six, another model will disappear. And obviously I roll a six, and a Necron runs away, of course. So at the start of Necron's turn 3, Living Metal comes into effect, and the Cryptek gains one wound. And the Necron Immortals reanimation protocols will also come into effect, meaning that on 5+, plus, each of the models that have previously been slain have a chance to come back. And three of them do. The Wraiths have a special ability that lets them fall back and charge again in the same turn, so I might take advantage of that to let the Warriors get some shots in. I'll need to fall back with the Immortals too, so they won't be able to shoot this turn. Maybe the Cryptek will be able to do something too, but mm, I doubt it. I move my Necron Warriors up 5 inches to get a little bit closer to that Captain. So the Warriors moved up, the Immortals moved away, the Wraiths moved away, and the Cryptek moving forward slightly to maybe pretend to be useful, we're ready to move on to the shooting phase. So the white guy's moved his Immortals here, he's managed to get two within rapid fire range. So that's going to be eight normal shots, two rapid fire for a total of 12 shots coming in at that Intercessor. So because the AP characteristic is different via the Maverick Dynasty, so at half range they're going to be AP minus two, which means we're going to have to roll those separately. So that's four attacks and four hits. So strength four, toughness four, needing fours to wound, three wound. AP minus two, that means there's going to be three five ups needed in order to keep this intercessor alive. Where were them dice earlier? Um, so three dice rolling three fives means that that intercessor sergeant is still in the fight. So next guy is going to put in the remaining eight shots coming in from the warriors going into the intercessor sergeant. So that's seven that hit the mark. So fours to wound. So that's four wounds going through. At AP minus one, there's going to be fours to save. So with two saved and two failed, only one wound left. That sergeant is out of here. Okay, so that's the shooting phase over and done with. Now we're going to move on to the charge phase. So the wraiths are going to be charging in at the captain, which means I get some overwatch. So the Mastercraft bolt rifle has two shots, needing sixes and overwatch. No sixes. So guy's seven inches away and normally there would be some cover there that would add an extra inch onto the charge. 
but these guys ignore cover and they just kind of float gracefully over it. So they are going to need a six inch charge. Guy makes a six inch charge. I think this captain's day is coming to an end. So the racer got six attacks, hitting on freeze. So that's three attacks that hit, needing freeze to wound. So that's two wounds that go through. And with these at minus two AP and two damage each, two fives needed to keep this captain alive. So that is two freeze, not enough. The captain is dead and the ultramarines are wiped out. Wow, I have to say, I really wasn't expecting to win this game so decisively. I think some really lucky rolls from me early on and some really nasty rolls for Ants certainly tipped the balance in my favour right from the start. And the Veil of Darkness ability, teleporting the Cryptek and the Immortals in in turn one really seems overpowered for a game like this. The Immortals were pretty effective at completely knocking out my secret weapon of the Hellblasters. I really expected them to do a lot more. Obviously they're really effective when they start getting into rapid fire range. I just wasn't really able to get in touch and distance. Yeah, those Hell Blasters have been the bane of my existence in almost every game you've played them, so I really wanted to take them out early on in this one. The Intercessors, I, they lasted a little bit longer, and the Captain really could have done with some close combat weaponry. He was really only hitting on AP zero for the majority of the time. But yeah, I was really impressed with how the Necrons did, actually. They don't die. Um, so it's really effective. You just need to kind of concentrate fire and wipe out the blob of them. But the mobility of those wraiths were actually pretty good as well. So they can kind of get up and around and in your face pretty quickly and do quite a lot of damage up close. So yeah, pretty scary actually. And um, so that's been a lot of fun. Um, really, really good to kind of test out what these smaller games actually look like. Hope you found it useful and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye for now. Taken by surprise on the desolate mining colony, the valiant Ultramarines proved no match for the relentless, reanimated legions of the Mephrit dynasty. Hellblasters fell to the lightning crack of Tesla carbines, inceptors torn asunder by razored claw. Even the brave Primaris captain perished defending the sacred architect he was tasked to recover. This Necron insurgent will not go unnoticed in the Imperium of Man, however, and the Adeptus Astartes have already mobilized. Their mission? Repatriate and revenge. To keep abreast of this ongoing conflict, subscribe to Midwinter Minis. This was a mere glimpse of an eternal conflict, and there will be more to come. For in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war!